This morning is to tell you about uh, what's happening in Silicon Valley, to give you the big picture. We enjoy doing this. Uh, all of us are out there working in the fields. We're all in our trenches. We're focused on our very specific missions. Um, while we're all doing that together, joint venture plays this role. We amalgamate. We get some altitude on the region, and we try to help people understand what our overall trends are, uh, what challenges they, they present, and what our opportunities are as a region. And so I'm going to uh, just talk you through some of that uh, data. We compile it annually in this report that you have in your hands. It's called the Silicon Valley Index. The whole spirit of the index is just to talk about Silicon Valley's problems and challenges and, and to just uh, put it out there in a very clinical way. These are the facts. These are the raw numbers. And then we just want it to be in people's hands, like your hands, so that you can use this information for uh, whatever purpose. And it stimulates a lot of really important conversations, we think, about the region. So if it's okay with you, I'm just going to take you through some of the facts that are coming out of this year's Silicon Valley Index, which we did indeed release just, um, just a couple of weeks ago. By the way, if you're not um, on the joint venture mailing list, uh, just go to jointventure.org and sign up. You can just do it right there on our website. And we're not going to spam you or anything like that. We're just, but we are going to send you this report. We'll send it to you. Uh, you can have your own PDF of it. We'll get that to you. We will also uh, give you a quarterly newsletter of uh, things that are, that are happening at Joint Venture. And also, by the way, just so you know, this index now actually lives on a website of its own. It's called SiliconValleyIndex.org. You can just go there. You can Google it. And all of the charts that I'll be showing you are at that website. And not only that, they're interactive. You can click on a chart, and you can get to the underlying data, and you can go to the data sources and so forth. Okay, so that's, uh, that's my wind-up. Let's get to it. I want to tell you about what we see as Silicon Valley's distinctive properties. And these are some of the latest numbers coming out of the index. Of course, defining Silicon Valley is a problem. It's a challenge. We have this challenge. We face this challenge every day. It's a fascinating challenge. Maybe you've thought about this. But everybody refers to Silicon Valley as if, as if that means something. Um, as if it really were a place on the map that you could you know, draw lines around. But nobody knows where those lines are or where they should be drawn. And so this is actually very challenging. I would actually submit that the, that the nickname, Silicon Valley, is, um, is a nuisance. It's a real problem for those of us who live here. Because nobody knows what it means and how to describe uh, the phenomenon. For example, we're going to talk about this later on. San Francisco, is that a part of Silicon Valley or not? Um, the East Bay, is that a part of Silicon Valley? They would argue that they are. And I actually subscribe to that argument. I think Silicon Valley is referring to a place. I think Silicon Valley is referring to a phenomenon. And the phenomenon is being entrepreneurial and innovative and technology-oriented and uh, having this incredibly dynamic economy. I think that's what it's referring to. But anyway, for the purpose of this, of this exercise, we finally have to draw lines on the map and decide what are we going to count, what are we not going to count. So we've done it. Uh, we've uh, put 40 cities on the map, and we're calling those 40 cities Silicon Valley. And they're parts of four different counties. It takes in this big swath of land, which if it was a state, would be about the size of Delaware. That's what we're talking about. Um, there are two and a half million people living in this little state that we're going to call Silicon Valley. And if we were a state, we would rank number 32 in terms of the state's population. What's interesting is that of those two and a half million people, 1.2 are in the workforce. It's always a moving target, but as of December 31st, that's what we look like, 1.25 in the workforce. And when you compare this workforce to other parts of the, uh, of the United States, it really stands out uh, for at least two reasons. First reason is it's one of the most diverse workforces in the nation. Um, fully 37% uh, of the people who live in Silicon Valley um, we're not born in Silicon Valley. It came from some other place. They actually speak another language other than English as their native language. There is no other place that can make that claim. Now, the only places in the US that come close to it are in Los Angeles and Miami. But their populations um, are not diverse in the way that ours are diverse. We have, we have all of these different ethnicities making up the stew here that we know as Silicon Valley. So it's such a source of richness here. Um, the other thing that makes it really striking is that it's uh, the world's most highly educated population. 
So about 60% of our workforce has, um, has, a, has a college degree, and about 40% of the workforce has multiple college degrees, advanced graduate training. So that's pretty amazing. It really is amazing. 25% are in what we call these high-skilled occupations. That means that you have to have um, uh, specialized training to do your job or advanced degrees. And 25% um, is, is, our, is our figure, the national average. Just so you can put this in perspective, 12%. 12%. So we're just, you know, we're double that. More than double that. It's truly amazing. Um, there's, uh, we can talk about this later on, but uh, the uh, median household income is 40% higher than the rest of the nation. So there is something to this notion that people come to Silicon Valley to pursue dreams of prosperity, and many achieve them, at least if you, if you look at the median figures. Uh, and then you take this little state the size of Delaware, and uh, it's two and a half million people, and we're accounting for 9% of the state's GDP, uh, huge uh, um, disproportionate percentages of the nation's GDP, 12% of all US patents are coming right out of this region. It's pretty amazing. So those are, are uh, what I see as are some of our really striking characteristics. And I guess by way of summary, I'll just tell you this. I tell my kids every day that they are not living in a normal place. <laughs> Other places are not like this. I tell them that. And they roll their eyes, and they think I'm just this old man talking. But this is fascinating. My daughter went off to college, and she signs up for an economics class. You know, introductory econ 101. And right off the bat, the first thing they assigned was a case study of Silicon Valley. <laughs> it's really fascinating. Not only that, the index was on their reading list. It was part of their research. <laughs> and so then my daughter started to understand, oh wow, other people are actually looking at this and uh, trying to understand what's happening in Silicon Valley. Well, I want to tell you some things that are uh, happening right now, just the, the, the major trends, and hopefully some of these will be of interest. And if there's not, there's more charts in there to go around. You can just uh, find whatever interests you. It's all yours. This is, it's all for you. Um, but the big, the big question everybody always has is where, how are we performing on the job front? Is the economy growing? And, uh, and in what way? So let me just put this number in front of you. It's a pretty amazing number. This is the number of jobs that were created in the Bay Area in the last 12 months. This is our job performance right here, 92,000. So that's pretty amazing. That's a big, that's a really big number. In fact, this number is getting us back to where we were um, in, in the dot-com period, the, the, the dot-com time. And what's so striking about it, in fact, let me, let me break this down for you a little bit. Um, here, here we are, here we are in uh, 2009, uh, and uh, that's you know, the, the year that the recession finally came home to roost in Silicon Valley, and we just tanked like, like the rest of the country. What's interesting, is that we were still adding jobs to Silicon Valley clear through the third quarter of 2008, while the rest of the country and, and the world were experiencing tremendous um, displacement and upheaval. It wasn't happening until 2009, but sure enough, we, you know, we hammered jobs that year, but then it was only, only a one-year look, and we had recovered by 2010. So that says something about the resilience of this economy. Um, and in 2011, we added 42,000 jobs, and then we have matched it in 2012. There's a, they're still going to tidy up those numbers, but it's somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so that's, that's our performance. What's striking about it is that it's consistent. We put together three steady years of solid growth. Uh, some would say impressive growth. Now, if you add in, we talked about San Francisco. Well, if you add in San Francisco, this is what you get. San Francisco added um, another 18,000 jobs of, of their own. And then when you add in the East Bay, uh, they had uh, uh, north of 20,000 jobs, Oakland and the, and the rest of the East Bay. And then when you finally add in the rest of the, the three counties to the north, they have another 10,000 jobs, and that's how we get to the 92,000 figure. So that's what's going on. Now, um, at the height of the dot-com, 2001, uh, our region added 129,000 jobs. So that's the most we've ever seen ever in a one-year period. Uh, this year, we've got 92,000 jobs. So we really are approaching those levels. What's striking about it, though, is that it's this gradual growth. It's this incremental growth. We got to that number incrementally. 2001, don't forget, it was just a spike. It was this crazy thing. It was just a spike and straight up, and then came crashing straight down. And so we, as we look back on that, it's now kind of, it's frankly, it's kind of embarrassing what, what happened during the dot-com thing. It was just, it was like the engine was completely out of whack, and people were overheated and overly exuberant. And, um, and, 
it's kind of embarrassing when you, when you look back on it, but when you look at this, this, this seems, this seems more real, it seems more sustainable, it seems like we're charting a pattern now that we're going to see continue over the next several years. So that's striking. Um, here's how it stacks up against national trends. The U.S. grew at a rate of 1.7 percent, whereas our region is growing at a rate of 3.5, 3.7 percent. So our rate of growth outstrips the nation, but also outstrips the state. Here's unemployment uh, trends that you, of course, follow closely. Um, but we're below, again, the national averages. We're coming down into the 6, 7, 7 percent territory in terms of unemployment um, accounted for unemployment. It's hard, to, very hard thing to measure. I think you understand that. But uh, the national average is somewhere up there around um, 8, 8.5 eight percent. Moving, of course, at all, at all times. But that's where we're at the time of 31st. This is a terrible chart. I shouldn't even put it up here. <laughs> I realize you can't see any of this. I totally realize this. But the question people always have is, so what's driving this growth? What's underneath it? And if you're really intensely interested in that question, we just want you to know there's an appendix in there. And to your heart's content, you can go through and you can look at every sector and see how they are performing. I'm just going to pull out a couple of interesting factoids. Um, uh, the thing that's clearly driving it the most is what we're calling information, products, and services. So this is IT, information technology, and all the infrastructure that supports information technology. And it's a big category that takes in the big drivers, and that would be cloud, cloud services, cloud computing, cloud storage. It would also include mobile devices, the applications that support those mobile devices, um, the, um, the, the uh, software, of course, is a huge deal, and then especially the internet. Internet companies, internet-based commerce, web, social media, all of those areas are what's driving this growth. But I also want to point out that um, there's also this area that we call innovation and specialized services that takes in research and development and, um, and other supporting ancillary things, marketing, design, and uh, all of those sectors also growing. Uh, it's also striking that we're seeing this um, something of a ripple effect throughout many pockets of the economy. For example, you'll see that the nonprofit sector, even the nonprofit sector, our sector, it grew by 3% um, uh, overall, overall. And so that's encouraging. And after going through uh, some really rough, really rough years. Um, and then another a key indicator is construction. Economists especially track that because that's always a sign of overall economic health. And so we have our construction sector growing by 11%. And you can see it out there. There's, uh, there's a lot of uh, development happening. So this is a picture of a fairly, um, fairly robust economy. This is another measure that's of interest to economists. It's value added per employee. And I just show you this because, again, it shows you that we're off the charts. The way we get this is we take the total output of the region. And then you take that number and you divide it by the total number of people in the workforce. And that tells you, it gives you a measure of your labor productivity. And um, it's off the charts. Uh, we're way ahead of the state, way ahead of the nation. The actual number, if you're curious, is $157,000 per employee. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's what's happening there. Um, just quickly, I'll tell you that we continue to be in the nation's top patent-generating region. Um, and it's very impressive. The raw number, if you're curious, is 13,500. That's how many patents come out of, came out of this region over the past 12 months. Um, you know, that comes out to 12 patents per 1,000 people. That's how it comes out. The national average is five patents per 1,000 people. It's no accident that the uh, United States government has located a patent office here. Maybe you saw the headlines. It's set up temporarily in Mental Park over there by USGS. And ultimately, there's going to be a permanent office established somewhere around here. This little chart will also show you where the patents are coming from. And most of them from uh, this stuff I described. IT, um, cloud, uh, software, all of that. It raises an interesting question, and we see this also with the venture capital numbers. I'll show you that in a second. I just want to commend this question to your own, um, to your own thinking. Some people look at this, and they say that Silicon Valley has become short-sighted, that we've become seduced by uh, superficial things, social media, you know, Facebook, silly things like that, right? That's, you know, that's what Silicon Valley is doing. Whereas uh, in years past, 
the venture money, the patents were coming out of hardcore stuff. Uh, semiconductors, integrated circuits, hardware, um, energy, biotech, uh, personalized medicine, the human genome. So they're thinking, we've been seduced by this silly stuff, and really this is not a sign of health, that we need to get back to basic research. And the real breakthrough stuff that the nation needs to solve important problems like energy and, uh, and global warming. So it's an interesting question. Um, I have two minds about that, but I'll, I'll be curious to know what you're thinking about. Um, just quickly, this tells you about the initial public offerings. A lot of people think that's, a, that's an important sign of health. And uh, they were very concerned because in 2008, we only had two, uh, we only had two IPOs. In 2009, we only had one. But that market has recovered. Uh, in fact, in 2012, you see we had 17 IPOs come out of our region, and they were you know, big ones, high-profile ones, and, 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 as well as ones that you haven't heard of. But uh, we're talking about Facebook last year, and uh, Palo Alto Networks, and Solar City, and, uh, and, and some, some like that. We can talk about that in depth if you're interested, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. I, I want to tell you as well that one of the most striking things about Silicon Valley is this. And that's the word of this land of startups, startup companies. So we always track this in the index. We track it pretty carefully. We, we want to know um, we want to know how many companies are being born on, a, on an annual basis and how many are dying on an annual basis. Because you know every day is that churn. Every day the company um, the company comes to life, and but every day the company is also succumb. And what you're interested in is the net rate. So last year we were actually negative. They're completely negative. More companies were dying than were surviving. But in this year, the past 12 months, um, we see that that was turned around completely. 46,000 is the raw number. So I'm just thinking this. Out there, there are 46,000 startup companies. 46,000. These are companies with seven people or less. And we only know of them because they registered. Uh, there's a sufficient size of revenue that they've actually registered. Um, and there are even more than that. Guys, you know, sleeping on couches with, with credit cards. Um, uh, you know, starting companies that way, eating pizza, um, and we can't even count them, but there's 46,000 of these in Silicon Valley, and that really is, uh, you know, that really is, I think, what makes this region distinct. Okay, so there's all that good news, right, and uh, people are excited about that. You could even say euphoric about that. Um, we think there's also a lot of uh, material in this index that should temper our euphoria, and I actually want to talk about that as much as anything. In fact, I think it's important that we really understand this. Uh, you can't just look at the shiny exterior. You have to, you have to put up a good peer inside the engine and really understand some of these underlying things. So let's talk about some of that. Here's uh, one, venture capital. I can talk about this at some length. Uh, maybe I won't go into it unless you're interested to pursue this line of thinking. But I just want to point out in a clinical way here that our venture funding is actually falling off. Uh, we had a 30% drop in venture funding over in, in last year, in the last calendar year. And that could be a sign of trouble for our region, or maybe just temporary, it's hard to tell. But I will say this, the venture capital industry, as an industry, is starting to face a lot of criticism, criticism that we haven't seen before. Um, on two fronts. One is that it's just the, you know, the, the performance of these funds isn't there, these large funds, the five hundred million dollar funds, they're not they're not seeing uh, they're not seeing the IPO activity and the startup activity that would justify that level of funds. So that's one front. And the second front is that as an industry, people are pointing out that the industry has not made any money for about 10 years. As, as a generalization, there's of course exceptions, but for 10 years, according to the Kauffman Foundation, venture capital in Silicon Valley has not made money, would have made more money had they just invested in the stock market or in the S&P 500. So the industry is coming under a lot of scrutiny, and sure enough, it's also experiencing some restructuring. There's a lot of flight out of that industry, some consolidation, and clearly a higher bar being set for the startups as they qualify for that A round funding. This money is harder to get them. And again, uh, I'll post, I'll, you know, I'll throw it out to you to determine how we should interpret this. Some people say, good riddance, this is how it should be. It should be a very high bar for a, a startup company to qualify for that kind of money. Other people say, no, the genius of Silicon Valley always has been that there's just so much money. And, and it just it just gets thrown out there so the way the farmer throws manure out on his field, right? And then you just see what you know what grows. 
And um, so some people have been asking the logic of Silicon Valley. I'll leave it to you to uh, honor that question. However, I want to point out that San Francisco is experiencing the awesome trend. So here again, we have San Francisco um, coming to the fore. It's very clear that there's, there's an interesting transformation in our region as San Francisco becomes a technology-oriented startup, innovation-oriented economy. Uh, lots of venture money flowing in there. In fact, uh, uh, we're starting to see this, this convergence. They may even start outpacing what Silicon Valley is doing in terms of venture funding. Here's where it's going again. You can make the same, you can make the same argument. You can see that most of it's going into the in the software and social media and the foo foo stuff, the so the so called foo foo stuff. That's a technical term that economists use. And uh, it less into these into these other uh, areas. Now we're also seeing a lot of angel investment, and so some people say this is the this is the offsetting factor. So maybe we shouldn't worry about venture capital after all because angel funding has come to the fore. And sure enough, that is real. That's a 90, 90% jump over the previous year. And when you add San Francisco, an even more dramatic jump. So angel funding has come to the fore. And I'll tell you another thing that has come is crowdsourcing, the crowdfunding, Kickstarter, and, and uh, things like that. And we actually don't have a measure of that in the index yet. We're going to have to figure out how to measure that. So these things are changing that. Um, but here's something I think we should really talk about, because this is what, um, what you think about all the time. Uh, income. This is a chart that will show you uh, the income picture for Silicon Valley. And so folks look at this and they think, yes, this is very impressive. Uh, we, uh, Silicon Valley is there on top. Our average income is outpaces the nation and outpaces the state by a considerable margin, and it's growing. It's increasing year to year. So nothing wrong with this picture. Silicon Valley, a healthy region. We would like to suggest, however, that this would only be a superficial understanding of what's actually happening in Silicon Valley. Um, we think that averages are a problem, especially in a region like ours, because we have a lot of high earners in Silicon Valley. So averages throw everything off. They just completely throw everything off. It's, you know, it's like the old joke about Bill Gates when he walks into a bar, and then everybody thanks him because now, on average, I'm a millionaire, right? Uh, on average. Uh, so we think that it makes more sense to look at median income. Now you know what median income is. That's where you take half the people uh, and you take that number where half people are making more than that number and half people are making less than that number. So our breaking point in Silicon Valley is $87,000. That's where we are. Half above, half below, 87 annual salary. But what's striking is that that number is falling. It's coming down every year. It has been for four years now in a row. That number's coming down. So that's, uh, I would suggest, the real story in Silicon Valley. And of course, you heard it, 86,000 people in our region are uh, actually worried about food, worried about where the next meal is coming from. It really is as if we are two valleys. You know that. Uh, a valley of the haves and have-nots. Uh, this dramatizes it. This shows you how we're becoming a classic hourglass economy. This, uh, this is California, this U.S. Let's focus right here. Here, right here, you see where uh, the uh, the bottom segment of our population. These are people that are making thirty-five thousand dollars or less, and they compose twenty percent of Silicon Valley's population. And that number is growing; it's actually growing. Uh, and then on top, you have people that are making a hundred thousand dollars or more, and that segment is um, is actually growing over time. It's growing. And so what's happening is we're becoming a classic hourglass economy. Lots of high earners, lots of low earners, nothing in the middle. We become squeezed. There's this disappearance of the middle class. That was not the Silicon Valley story for decades running. We had been a region that just created a profusion of those mid-range jobs, mid-range professions, manufacturing positions, line positions, no longer. We can talk about this for a long time if you want, but there's structural changes that are, that are driving this and leaving a lot of people very disadvantaged. And so it raises very important community questions that I need to grapple with. This is also a chart that we take no pleasure in showing, um, but here it is, just in a clinical way because we report the facts. It shows that there's real disparities and they're persistent by race, by race and ethnicity. So Anglos, Asians are the high performers, and then it's, uh, we can see that African American and Hispanic are the lower performers, but the point here is not the gap. 
I mean, the gap alone is alarming enough. But the other point is to show you that not only is there a gap, but they are losing ground. That these, there are these cleavages and they're losing ground. They're actually becoming less with each succeeding year. So this is the kind of place we live in, and it's, uh, it's really troubling. Here's, uh, we measure who's qualifying for food stamp participation in, uh, in our region. And that number two is growing year to year. You can see just uh, a steady increase over a multi-year period. So that's, uh, that's what's happening. Then uh, we look at the same thing for, um, um, we're thinking about the, the rising generation, the workforce that we're going to need to populate this incredible economy that creates all these high-end jobs. And uh, the question is, are, you know, are kids performing in school? Are the schools themselves performing and doing what we need? And again, we see these persistent disparities. Very troubling. Uh, the question in this chart, that this chart is posing, is who is meeting the basic UC entrance requirements, UC and CSU. And again, Angles Whites um, uh, are meeting them in higher numbers, and our other, uh, our other uh, ethnicities are not. So this is, uh, this is trouble. So I wanted to just point out that uh, those are the kinds of things that, uh, that we're reporting in the index. And there's, uh, I think, a lot of stuff here for us to think about. Uh, there's other miscellaneous things. We can talk in great length about this. Let me just throw out a couple of charts that are, uh, are interesting, uh, I think. Here is uh, the arts. Uh, we look at the arts, we consider the arts to be a sign of health, uh, one of those vital signs that you look at when anytime you're examining a patient. So the question is, how does, how does uh, our region stack up to other regions in terms of uh, participation in the arts? And we measure a lot of ways. Number of people involved, number of month, amount of money going in. This is a chart that shows you in kind contributions. And I don't know if you're just curious how we stack up, but there's Miami uh, way ahead of us, Philadelphia way ahead of us, even Raleigh, North Carolina, Portland, Oregon. We actually don't stack up very well. Um, but there are, difficult, there are difficulties with this chart. I just want to point that out. This is only one county, San Clair County. If you were to ask San Francisco, as some people argue we should, then this would be an entirely different uh, story altogether. So, you know, there's different ways to think about that. Um, I was surprised by this. This is, a, this is a chart that shows you what kind of events we're going to. And I would guess that we mostly have sporting events. Not true. Uh, the blue bar is sporting events. The other one is arts and culture events. People are going to way more, you know, way more uh, artsy things than they are going out to the ballgame. So, you know, that's a, that's an interesting fact to write about our region. Here's a chart that shows volunteerism in the arts, and again, we don't stack up the way you might have thought with these other regions around the country. That's uh, kind of fascinating. This is a chart that uh, looks at disconnected youth. Uh, these are people, these are, these are teenagers that aren't enrolled in school and don't have a job. They're just out there. And uh, you know, these, the, it's, uh, the numbers are uh, alarming. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a bigger number than you actually think. However, you'll see that the trend is positive for us. Is, is declining. It's been declining. So maybe we're making some 